Hello everyone, this will just be a quick video on how to um, navigate, how to use this Canvas course uh, that I've set up for our math class. Uh, in addition, uh, I've, I've got a couple tips on here for, for parents especially, but, but also could be used for students on how to kind of keep track of your progress and how to, um, to make sure that you're getting the most out of your experience with our, our self-paced, self-directed learning model we have here. So the first thing I want to show you is um, how, uh, how to, when, you're in, when you enter the course, um, what these four, these four tiles mean and what they do. So um, obviously you've already clicked on the how the course works button uh, that took you to this video. But when you come in here on a, on a daily basis, uh, there's probably only one or two places that a student would want to click. The first one would maybe be the enrichment tab. This is where I have housed all the enrichment activities for the entire year. So um, my, my policy on enrichment really is kind of uh, anyone can do it, but I'd, I'd like you to kind of finish, uh, finish the chapter for that particularly for that particular activity first. So I have labeled in here I have a, uh, an item that labels what all the activities are. Um, what chapters they go with, what they explore, whether you need a partner. Um, and you can do them at any time throughout the course. But let's say you're going to do an activity from chapter one, you probably want to finish all the regular chapter one activities first before you dive in there. And then if you're in chapter two and you want to you pop back and work on chapter one, that's fine. As the teacher, I might say, hey, we need to stay focused on what we're doing. I might um, redirect as needed. But for the most part, I want I want the students uh, to have freedom to explore in greater depth. Um, as long as they're ahead of the pace, uh, I feel like they they should be able to to choose um, when they work on those enrichment activities. So that's where those are housed. If you click on this link there, um, and all those materials can be found there. Um, when you come to the course, the first thing you want to click on is this "Keep Growing" tab, and that will take you to the the modules. So you'll notice um, as a student. Right now, Order of Operations Project is grayed out. All of Chapter 1 is grayed out. That's because you have to view these items before moving on. So for pre-algebra procedures, all you've got to do is come in here, view this file. I gave you some directions about how to, to download it and send it into Shobi. I think uh, this video I made at the beginning of the year, we, we might be transitioning to turning things into Canvas at some point. But for now, I'm just starting out in Shobi. So, um, once you click next, that takes you to the next uh, thing. So here's the directions for the order of operations project. And you notice you keep scrolling down, and there's always a next you can click that takes you to the next thing. And you notice if I hover over this, it says next module is inside the chapter one folder. So um, when you come in, you just always want to scroll down. So let me go back to uh, to modules here on the left. You just always want to scroll down to the next uh, thing that's not grayed out. Um, so if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see all the way into chapter two. Um, and if you don't want to, you can just click that little carrot to minimize that. But, um, but you can see all the activities that are coming up, but you can only do the next thing that's uh, active, that's live. Um, so you, if you click down here, it's not going to do anything until you take the chapter one pretest. So that's the thing. If you're having trouble finding something that works, just look for the thing at the bottom that's that's ready for you. Um, so that's uh, those are the two tiles you can click, and that's pretty basic how you navigate this course. Um, I I tell the students, so I'll I'll say it here as well. I don't assign homework for each individual student. Rather, what they do each evening, um, they are required to do homework at night, 20 to 30 minutes, just to keep that that deliberate practice going. But what they're going to do at night is going to depend on um, how much or where they ended up during the day. So if they ended on with the pre-algebra pretest is the next thing, you're going to take the pretest at home. Um, the only thing we don't do at home are quizzes and tests. Uh, so that's that's one thing you can always you know study for those, and I'll, I'll get into how we do that in a minute when we look at unit overview sheets. But that's uh, those are the two main things you need to be aware of: is you continue to work at home. Um, and it's that the homework is decided by where the student left off. It's not like they decided what their homework should be. However, um, 
it is it is kind of predetermined by where they leave off. The other tile I have here on the home page is the class procedures and IB syllabus. So if you're an IB student, you can come here to view the syllabus or, and uh, the, the class procedures apply to everybody, um, IB and non-IB. But that's kind of it for, for my page. Obviously, you can come over here to the calendar and see what, um, what things are coming up. Uh, but that's the same for all your classes. Um, mine are green for this particular one. I'm not sure what that looks like from the student view. Um, but I want to get into now, that's, that's how you navigate the course. I want to get into how you can kind of keep track of your progress. Um, obviously, with the, uh, with the modules, uh, it's pretty easy because it's just the next thing that's there. But I've also created, let's see if I've got it up here. There we go. I've also created for, for each chapter what I call a unit overview sheet. The students are to use this as a learning tool to assess their learning and to um, kind of keep track of what they've mastered, what they haven't mastered. Um, so it, on each uh, overview sheet, you'll see at the top our statement of inquiry, our essential questions for that. Um, I was a little bit more deliberate with the directions for chapter one just because we're just starting. But each of them, each of the lessons has its own little box here for the students to kind of monitor themselves. So after they take the pretest, they'll come in here and, and they'll download this in Notability and they'll highlight where they think they are uh, in their learning of this particular topic. This target is I can uh, write and evaluate algebraic expressions. So this is something they might have had um, some context from sixth grade math or fifth grade math. They might have seen a couple questions about it on the pretest. So they might say this might be one where kids would say, okay, I think I'm a four out of five on this. Then what we have over here, these are the different assignments the students will complete in order to master this target. We're, uh, we're using flipped classroom concepts, but I, like, I don't like to call this a flipped classroom. I like to call it a mastery learning uh, classroom. So we're working toward a level five understanding from the student's perspective and from my perspective. So this, the, I work as a team with the students to help them make sure they get there. I also have a place where the kids should write down why they think they are the level they are, whether it's, you know, I, I'm a little hazy here or there, or um, whatever the case may be. The next portion here is a time management portion. So the kids set a goal for when they think they will complete it. This September 4th, I've kind of set recommended dates based on when, if I go back to the calendar in Canvas um, and go to September, you'll see I've set a deadline think if it'll scroll here. Here we go. I've set a deadline for the first quiz of um, September 12th. So in order to keep pace with that that kind of deadline, not that you couldn't take it on the 13th, but it, I'm, when I set the deadlines, I'm kind of saying, okay, in order to have a nice pace uh, for us to stay relaxed throughout the year, um, the 12th is, is a good thing to aim for. So those recommended dates of where to finish those are kind of based on, you know, keeping track with that that overall target of taking the quiz on time. So um, that's that portion there. Um, and then the post-lesson reflection. So all these things up here are going to be changed as the student, you know, each day the student will come in and they'll adjust the unit overview sheet um, and resubmit it to Shobi. Um, so all these things are adjustable based on what the this, this student experience is in working with that target that day. The post-lesson reflection is really important. So um, when the student, let's say, finishes uh, an attempt at the Expressions Basics, they'll turn it into me, but then I might say, okay, you missed uh, number nine and number 14. Um, and then the student and I might have a little discussion about why they missed it. So uh, for them, what they want to do is they want to come in here and say, okay, I missed a question that looked like this. So we'll use this later when we get to the quiz so that they'll know what it is they need to study, where were their, their strong points and their weak points. Um, so that's what I mean by what, what will I do about it. Um, so there's, those might be questions where they, they get a textbook and they look for some of those questions or they ask me for some resources. and We can, we can work that out, make sure they're prepared and that they fully learn these concepts because where we definitely want them to be is at this level five understanding. So, um, and then the students will work, uh, you know, like I said, if a student missed number nine and 14, they would go back and they would fix number nine and 14. Um, we're going to revise these assignments and this until the students are 100% accurate. Uh, and then we'll can, we'll, once the students are at a level five, we'll just move on to the next target. 
Um, so students will work their way down through this overview sheet, updating it each day. Uh, so this will get more and more populated with information until we come to this box that's for the targets 1-1 one, one through 1-4 one, quiz. They need to complete this. There's a study guide in Canvas that the students will need to complete. Uh, and they'll need to make sure they're, they're good on all these other checklist items. I also have a list of vocab terms for the quiz that students will need to know. There won't be any vocab portions on the quiz. However, it's just a good idea to know, if you're, you're taking a quiz on this stuff, what a solution actually is or, you know, what do you, what's the definition of a term. Once the students take the quiz, they'll do a reflection on it, just like they do a reflection on each assignment. And this will help them when they talk about their errors, you know, were they calculation errors, were they actual errors of understanding, uh, what type of problems did you miss. This will help them when we go to take the test later on. So they'll write all that in here. Notability, you can handwrite, you can type. So it's got some nice uh, options for you there. Um, but then we can work through, uh, this is the second half of the chapter. Here's the second quiz um, on those targets. And then here's the test where we want to put everything together. Okay, And then we actually do a reflection for that as well because we want to um, look at what we missed in Chapter 1 and then move on to Chapter 2. So if you're a parent... One thing you can always ask to see is pull out your unit overview sheet. Let's take a look at that. That should be a notability. We're going to work really hard this year on keeping notability nice and organized and teaching kids how to be organized digitally as well as with a physical binder. That's a skill you have to learn. You can't just assume that, that kids are going to stay organized. And then you can see that as they finish these assignments, they're going to X them out. And, and finished means master okay so they should have lines through these assignments and that will give you as the parent a good idea of kind of where they are um, however sometimes you know kids will cross stuff out uh, prematurely they'll think it's mastered and then they'll, they'll forget to go back and fix something in Shelby um, they'll forget to check assignments in Shelby to see if there's any revisions that need made made um, I'll do my best to, to make sure I communicate to them in, in the class each day individually about that but um, as a parent, you can also be checking M MMS. I do update MMS every day, uh, either in the afternoon or the morning, just because I they feel like that's another communication tool. I've got a little video from a couple years back. I mean, I'll put that at the end of this one, but that's another tool you can use to keep track of where they are. Um, before I show uh, splice in that that other older video, I did want to add in um, a couple things for for you to check out. As as always. You're always welcome to email me. I'll be emailing you guys each week, uh, you parents, with an update about where your student, where, where the, the overall you know group of students are. Your child might be a little bit behind or a little bit in front of that. When I talk about where we are, if that's always a good time to check the overview sheet. Um, uh, my email and my phone number are on the Team One webpage. Um, I will say email is the quickest way to get a hold of me. I respond to that very quickly because it's always easier to, to pop off an email real quick. Um, I do understand some people prefer phone, uh, but that's uh, for the phone. It might be 24 hours before I get back to you, but email will usually get back to you much faster. Um, I also on my webpage, I have a lot more about you know, my philosophy as a teacher, my philosophy of, of feedback, of assessment about um, what I have found uh, based on classroom evidence, what, what works best for kids and, and some of the, the research that I've done. Um, and just kind of a little bit more about the class, a structure, what my expectations are, um, and, and some things like that. So if you go to teacher pages on the Fort Couch website, you can find this, uh, this website as well. It's good materials. Um, I think that's all right now. I'm going to go ahead and splice in the MMS video that I made a couple years back because I feel like it still does a, a fairly good job of um, communicating how you can use MMS as a tool to keep track of your students. Um, but as always, if you have email, or if you have questions for me, shoot me an email, give me a call. Um, I'm always, uh, I always want to make sure that I'm partnering with parents and make sure that students understand that there's three members of the team here when we talk about math. It's uh, the student is the most important member. I'm the second member, but their parents are an integral part of the process as well. And you guys can make sure um, 
that the kids know that and then they, they know that um, parents and, and, I, and I are working closely to make sure that um, the student learns the most they possibly can this year. Um, the, other, uh, the other way you can keep track of your kid is obviously in MMS with their grades. Now it is a little bit different with my class because it is mastery based. So um, every kid is going to, every homework assignment, so these are all homework assignments here, is either going to be either worth, uh, it's going to be worth one point. Uh, and it's going to be, it's going to be either a, a no grade or it's going to be, it's going to show up as missing until they master that. But as soon as they master it, it's just it's going to turn to a one. So this particular child, notice they have a no grade on the all inequalities basics. But the due date is 925. What that means is, um, basically, when I, when I change assignments from no grade to missing, um, is when they are uh, generally a, a week or so late. I update MMS every morning um, before I come to work with uh, assignments that were turned in the, the previous day. That's, that's usually my, um, my habit. Um, but if you see no grade on there, that just means that that's something, someplace that they should be, but they're just slightly behind. So probably not a huge cause for concern if you see that no grade on there. Um, where you should start to be worried is if you start to see missing assignments. Uh, missing assignments uh, are, are assignments that the students should have already mastered. Um, and and they're, uh, they're a little bit behind. Notice these assignments. Here's one from September 3rd. Here's a couple from September 23rd that are, that are still missing. So if you see missing assignments, that's a sign that your child is, uh, is probably falling a little bit behind the pace of the team. Um, and maybe uh, we need to work together to figure out how to uh, get them back on track. I have all kinds of creative solutions. I'm willing to work with, uh, with you, whatever you want your involvement to be. Um, I, I have things I can do on my end that I'm, I'm already doing most likely, but um, if you have questions, just please feel free to email me um, if, if you have a situation like this, and I'll be glad to help.